G'day, welcome to another episode of On the Road with the Pirate. This is a pretty long trip on the road, all the way from the far north, eventually to the far south. Today I'm in Bundaberg. Uh, yesterday drove down from uh, Cannonvale, uh, about eight, nine hours on the road, uh, towing uh, the Shitbox 20 that uh, I'll be taking back to Taz. And ultimately our end destination is Geelong, where unfortunately we're gonna have to leave the boat until mid-March, which is the earliest we can get on the Spirit of Tasmania. Anyway, let's uh, get in the car and get on the road. So why exactly am I doing this uh, road trip? Uh, finally, heading back to Taz. I got a new job, uh, which starts sometime early in the new year, they said, um, but with the cyclone brewing and, and the first predictions looking like it was going to go right over the top of where I was living, I thought it best to pack up and hit the road. In hindsight, the cyclone's gone north. Um, it hasn't quite hit yet, but it looks like it'll be somewhere north of Townsville. But anyway, I've made the decision that I'm on the road south. The most infuriating thing about driving on the Bruce Highway M1 is that it's dual carriageway, double lanes, 110 k's an hour speed limit, and people persist in driving at 85 k's an hour. Well, we're in New South Wales. How can you tell? roads. The roads are actually uh, not bumpy and uh, the other way you can tell is because your phone and your smartwatch suddenly changes onto rest of Australia time, daylight savings. Uh, we're about 70 k's from Yamba, uh, should make it by 5 o'clock New South Wales time. Uh, that'll be 8 hours of driving and uh, yeah, we made good progress. So I'm just heading into Yamba, um, it's, uh, time is 4.53 and uh, done a couple of videos about Yamba before, both on uh, the On The Road series and also the uh, uh, Shit Hotels of Australia series and all of those were shot when I was working for Tassel for their prawn division and um, just off here to the left down this road is the uh, Tassau prawn farm and another company's prawn farm as well. Both those prawn farms are closed because of uh, white spot disease. Um, basically the companies had to uh, destroy all of their prawns because um, some idiot member of the public bought some uncooked prawns from the supermarket, imported uncooked prawns and uh, decided to go fishing with them and release the white spot virus into the environment. Um, I'm back here because I love it. I really like the amber, so uh, what better place to stay after an eight hour drive? Forgotten how ridiculously expensive things are here in Yamba. Just filled up the uh, four-wheel drive, and uh, diesel cost here is 35 cents a litre more expensive than in Canada, and uh, 20 cents a litre more than I paid everywhere else today. 
Unbelievable. Oh well. That's the price you pay heading south. So, uh, time for a toilet break. Now, I'm not going to do a uh, Josh Kale, Noel Phillips, Lou review, but um, just a little comment on the uh, rest areas here on the M1 heading south from uh, from Yamba. Um, they seem to be sort of, uh, they're very well fitted out, although the door didn't actually lock, but, um, but they're a lot, not logically located or signposted. So, uh, for example, I passed a sign saying, rest area 500 metres ahead I was in the left hand lane and 500 metres you had to actually get into the right hand lane and turn over two lanes of the other highway to get to the rest area so I missed that one uh, next thing we saw a sign saying next rest area 41 k's ahead and then it said two other rest areas and they both indicated that they were closed and then surprise surprise about 10 k's down the road was this one so I don't know I'm uh, not exactly sure where I am, uh, I'm north of Kempsey, um, so let's keep heading south and see if we can see some Pacific Ocean. Looks like there's another pirate on the road. Alright, well I will do a loo review because these loos on the highway, they look really, really good don't they? Until you get inside and they're absolutely bloody disgusting. Like that one had no seat, there was shit left in the in the bowl, toilet paper was everywhere, uh, the, ba the basin didn't work, uh, no soap, yeah, just disgusting and um, my fellow Churchill fellow Catherine Weber uh, wrote a, her policy paper on we need to talk about public toilets and uh, I'll put a link to that in the, uh, in the comments below because seriously in Australia we need to talk about public toilets, they're disgusting. Seems like it, uh, at this rest area there's two uh, competing Christian groups trying to save our souls. I think mine's already gone. It's uh, not exactly the Pacific but it is the Hawkesbury River or the Hawkesbury Estuary so it is a water view. And That's it, that's the end of the M1, we're now on to the M11, so that's the end of the Pacific Coast Way. And uh, Well, I suppose I should be grateful really, because unlike uh, the Bruce Highway coming into Brisbane, where there was gridlock before you even got there, we're pretty much past Sydney right, on the uh, M7, we just sort of past the Mount Druitt, uh, Rudy Hill turn off, and uh, we've hit the first bit of, not quite gridlock, but um, at least... Uh, pretty slow traffic and uh, Google Maps predicts oh, I've just stopped so there we go the first time stopped on a motorway um, yeah Google Maps predicts it's going to be a six minute delay for this which is probably going to be caused by absolutely nothing as all of these gridlocks seem to be caused by well it's uh, stop three on the uh, trip to the far south, well, almost, let's just say to the south. Tonight we're in Mittagong, and uh, yes, I'm wearing a vest. Uh, not just because I'm a soft Queenslander climatised to the heat. Mittagong's actually 635 metres above sea level, so uh, weather logic means that it uh, drops one degree for every 100 metres. So it is a little bit cool and uh, it's 
walking up the road here to get some Oporto chicken for dinner. And we'll have a look around Mitigong. So Minigong has the feel of a camel town or an Oatlands, except divided by this four lane highway. Um, yeah, sort of a colonial feel with the uh, modern traffic. Well, it's day five on the uh, long road south and uh, just filled up with fuel uh, outside Yes. And I think uh, we'll stop for a little break, um, maybe at Gundagai. Well, I couldn't possibly do an episode of On the Road without a stop in Gundagai because now I've been on the road to Gundagai. And this little guy is the famous dog on the tucker box. Probably the first time ever that a shitbox 20 overtakes a 500 horsepower powerboat. Goodbye, goodbye New South Wales. Hello Victoria, the mighty Murray River. I'm in Bendigo, staying for one night at the Happy Wanderer Motel on uh, Napier Street. Uh, pretty busy traffic at the moment, train line around the back, so uh, not expecting it to be quiet, but at least it gives me space to park the boat just around the side and around there. Well, I was thinking about checking out the uh, Chinese Museum um, here in Bendigo, but uh, it's a half hour walk from the motel and to be honest it's 32 de degrees and I've driven for eight hours. So I walked 20 minutes to here, the Bendigo Tramways Museum, but unfortunately Oh well, I guess uh, I'll have to come back to Bendigo another day. Okay, I think I'm going to stroll back to the hotel and get cool. Well, that was my uh, first and last night in Bendigo. And now time to hit the road down to Geelong and store this boat. Um, see if we can get a look at some of the sights uh, as we drive through Bendigo, because we didn't get to see much on our walk yesterday. Um, but first the challenge will be uh, getting out of here. Okay, so there was just enough room to park, but um, should be able to reverse back and uh, at least avoid running over their recycling bin.
serviced daily? I don't think so. I do have some concerns about the cleanliness of these facilities, but I'm never going to use it again, so I'm not going to phone. Well, we've come to the end of the road. Well, the end of this road at least. The trip's not over yet, but I'm going to leave the four-wheel drive in the boat here until mid to late March, which is the earliest I can get on board the Spirit of Tasmania to finally get on the last stretch. Um, but we'll end, end this one here, and uh, we'll end it with the roadkill count. 104. That's 38 in Queensland, 49 in New South Wales, and 17 in Victoria. And I reckon we can get more than that just driving from Hobart to Dover. Anyway, maybe that's a story for another trip on the road. So, while the boat's safely stored at Ocean Grove, I'm flying home on the Ocean Grove beach. If you've enjoyed watching this one, uh, please click like, please subscribe, um, make some comments in the comments box below, and um, yeah, we'll see you next time on the road. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Road kill count, Hobart to Dover, 85 k's, 146. It's appalling, isn't it? Oh well, such is death.